Distracted, she allowed herself to be led back to the floor by a colorfully garbed Grand Turk. Too late she smelled the hateful odor of brandy on his breath. Too late she realized that he'd mistaken her for an entirely different class of female. Stilling a sense of panic, she endured his broad hints and the sweaty squeeze of his hands. But when the music ended, she slipped away from his groping arms and darted through a gap in the crowd. Clearly it was time to leave. She'd enjoyed her few dances. There was nothing else worth staying for. Vaguely disappointed, she stopped beside a pillar to check if the Turk had followed her. I see you, my queen. You shan't escape me so easily. Seeing him not far behind, she hurried off again, dodging between knots of curious revelers and amorous couples, making her way toward the entrance and the protection of her footman. She broke into a run and suddenly cannoned into what seemed like a wall of darkness. The unseen wall swirled, revealing a ghastly skeleton, and she lost her balance. Black-gloved hands held her in a strong grip. A shriek escaped her throat. Please do not be frightened, ma'am. I am perfectly harmless. His voice, a mellow baritone, warm and dark, struck a chord deep within her. As she regained her balance, he loosened his hold. There was no need to panic. I... I am sorry I screamed, she said, straightening up. It was just that... Your costume was so startling. Let him think it was just the costume. You are in a hurry. Is someone troubling you? He asked in that same rich and reassuringly sober voice. Dark eyes gleamed down at her through the eye holes of death's mask. Below, another opening revealed full, beautifully shaped lips. Nervously, she glanced back. About twenty feet away, the Turk still meandered among the crowd, perhaps seeking new prey. The man in the turban? The stranger asked. She turned to him and nodded. Do you think he would leave you be if we danced together? Her breath caught, and she stared up at him. No one would tangle with a tall gentleman in the guise of death, she decided. If they did, they would soon discover that the painted bones concealed entirely solid and powerful muscles. But could she trust him? Y yes, I am sure he will, she replied. Then I would be honored to lead you out into this set, he said. He released her shoulders and offered her his arm, eyes gleaming, as if he enjoyed coming to her rescue. He was sober. He was polite. And thoroughly intriguing. She could not resist. Thank you, sir. She laid her hand on his arm. I should thank you. You will have to be patient with me. It has been many years since I last danced. His tone was light, but she wondered. Had he been in mourning too? It is no great matter, she smiled up at him. No one will notice a misstep, I'm sure. They took their places in the set. A moment later, another familiar country dance began to play. Lively, too vigorous for conversation. Livy once again threw herself into the dance, relieved to see that after her few stumbles, death fell into the rhythm as well, his cape swirling around him theatrically. Though as large and powerfully built as Walter had been, the stranger was light on his feet. From the grin that peeked through the opening in his mask, she guessed he enjoyed it too. Then she realized her bodice had shifted again, when they came to the top of the set, she surreptitiously twitched it back into place. I must thank you again for coming to my rescue, sir, she said as they stood awaiting their turn to rejoin the line. It was my pleasure. In truth, I had seen you from above and was hoping to ask you for a dance. He cleared his throat. I hope that Grand Turk did not frighten you too much. No. He was merely making a nuisance of himself. My footman awaits me, and would have protected me in any case. You came alone? Livy paused, knowing how scandalous her behavior must seem. But it was unlikely they would meet again, or that he would recognize her. She nodded. 
and you? I came with my cousin. He has been plaguing me for some time to come with him to one of these affairs. I agreed only to prove I am a hopeless case, beyond the pleasures of dancing. Is that why you chose to be the skeleton at the feast? A joke on your poor cousin? She asked playfully. A rather feeble joke, I suppose, he said, looking down at her with an expression that was suddenly intent. Hungry. Hungry. 